Economic degrowth is the most expensive and poverty-inducing tool to fight climate change. We know this because we tried it once. About five years ago, all across the globe, we had a nice little experiment of degrowth. Most of the world stopped driving. You can see the fall in CO2 in 2020 compared to 2019. We slowed down industrial production. We kept the airplanes on the ground. And we sat at home and watched Tiger King instead. And it did indeed result in less carbon emissions. The average across the globe was around 5 to 8 percent over here. Some other countries, such as the US, were even higher. This is a very real benefit. But how much did it cost? The advocates of economic degrowth want GDP to fall. And GDP did fall in 2020 by trillions of dollars all across the globe. Now let's compare that with the economic benefits associated with the reduction of CO2 emissions. The global economic environmental benefits are estimated to be around $650 billion of value. Trillions in costs are simply not worth billions in benefits. Let me put this another way. For every ton of CO2 reduction in 2020, we had to shell out $1,750. And another paper looking at the Spanish economy estimated 7,000 euro per ton. Source. Now some might initially respond, we need the climate to survive. Of course it's worth that much. Stop being a greedy economist. I'm not because it's not the only option on the table. We have many tools to fight the climate that are orders of magnitude cheaper. Instead of spending $1,700 or more to reduce one ton of CO2 emissions, perhaps we should only spend $100 or $50. Solar, wind, and nuclear all require less of our resources to achieve the same amount of CO2 reduction. And here's the other thing. In order to meet the Paris Agreement, we would have to have a COVID magnitude recession continually for the next decade. No amount of planning or coordination could prepare us for such a social and economic collapse. It's not necessary. We have other options.